today. Um, we'll be discussing destination marketing in Kenya with two members of the Kenya Tourism Delegation and the, um, the Marketing Director for the Kenya Bo uh, Tourism Board and the Operations Director at Nature Expeditions Africa. We'll explore the opportunities in promoting the iconic, this iconic destination of Kenya in Africa. We'll discuss how Kenya's perception overseas has evolved over time and what lies ahead for tourism in Kenya. I am Sarah Robinson from the Google Travel Team, and I also have with me Cecily Saki, um, also from the Google Travel Team. We're both based out of New York. I'd now like to invite each of the panelists to introduce themselves. Um, we'll start with the Honorable Phyllis Candy, Cabinet Secretary of the Kenya Ministry of East African Affairs, Commerce, and Tourism. Um, and I'd just uh, like to ask you to introduce yourselves and uh, also uh, mention one thing that you, you know, one of your favorite things about Kenya, whether it be a place or something to do, uh, just to get all of our, our viewers out there thinking about uh, your next trip to Kenya. It looks like we've had, uh, may have had the cabinet secretary uh, follow for a moment. So um, in, instead, we'll get started um, with Dr. Kinua. Um, if you could please introduce yourself uh, and tell us one of your favorite things about Kenya. My name is Dr. Han Kinua, the tourism secretary from the Republic of Kenya. I would say Kenya is a land endowed with all the tourism products. And what I like about Kenya is that Kenya is very hospitable, hospitable people. They love visitors and they like visitors a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't hear the Thank you. And uh, we have, again, the Honorable uh, Phyllis Candy now on the line. Um, if you could please introduce yourself. Oh, and sorry, just make sure that your uh, mute button is turned off. Perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. My name is Phyllis Kandia. I'm the Cabinet Secretary uh, in charge of uh, the Ministry of Tourism in Kenya. And um, I'm happy to have this hangout with you this afternoon. Great. Thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, next we have uh, Jacinta Nizioka um, from the Kenya Tourism Board. Good evening. I'm Jacinta Nzioka, the Director of Marketing at the Kenya Tourism Board. Uh, we are here this evening to just talk about uh, the, the uh, cradle of humankind. As you asked, uh, what is the most important thing that I love about the country is that um, we have been scientifically proven to be the origin of man. And the, the, the oldest full human body skeleton was discovered in Kenya. So every traveler owes it to humankind to visit Kenya. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. And uh, Ms. Jane Adam from Nature Expeditions Africa. Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Jane Adam from Nature Expeditions um, from Nairobi, Kenya. and. Um, one of the things I like about Kenya is the different cultures that we have. We have um, a variety of um, different cultures with different people. We have 42 tribes in Kenya, and that's what makes it so unique. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Adam. That's actually a great segue for our first question. Um, and I'll send this uh, to you, Madam Candy. Uh, from tropical rainforests and beaches to vast deserts and, and majestic mountains, 
Um, there's really a lot of diversity in the landscape in Kenya. Can you tell us more about what visitors could expect to see when, when traveling through Kenya? Thank you very much. Um, in a country as big as um, uh, France, uh, Kenya is uh, blessed with uh, a huge diversity uh, from the beaches, beaches at the coast, which is 600 kilometers uh, wide, uh, to the savannas where you get all sorts of animals, including the Big Five, to the snow-capped mountains of uh, central Kenya. Up to the north, you'll get the deserts, and you have the freshwater lakes of the Rift Valley. And uh, to the west, you have uh, the freshwater lake uh, Victoria, which is one of the biggest uh, freshwater lakes in the world. And so Kenya has so much diversity. Uh, and, and also in terms of uh, climatic uh, conditions, we have the highlands where you, you, you have cool temperatures all year round, uh, ranging between um, 15 degrees to uh, a maximum of uh, 29. Uh, and obviously, uh, in the north, uh, you know, it's hot and it's hotter the coast. And so we, we are really uh, very lucky to be uh, a country that's across the equator, that's blessed with all this diversity. And so there's so much for everybody uh, to come and uh, enjoy in Kenya uh, in terms of tourism. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much for providing that background. Um, so many uh, interesting landscapes to visit. Um, could you tell us a bit more about how uh, people generally get around Africa um, as tourists and otherwise, sorry, in Kenya? Um, is it mostly uh, a busing system? Is it easy to get from all these different places and be able to see all of these places? Thank you very much. Um, Kenya is known for uh, the tra transport hub. Uh, in Africa. Uh, Nairobi in particular has a uh, very sophisticated infrastructure. Um, you will, uh, um, Nairobi is known for its uh, airports. Uh, currently uh, we have one of a uh, very new airport that we just opened that uh, caters for six million uh, people and we have a new greenfield that we're building. Uh, we also have a huge um, I mean, uh, uh, road, uh, road network uh, across the country. We have airstrips uh, that uh, our visitors could use to um, uh, travel to the more remote areas of, of the country. And so uh, that is very important for us as, as a government to invest in infrastructure so that we can make uh, our visitors as comfortable as possible. And together with that, we also have um, camps um, from the top leisure comes all the way to, um, you know, the, the usual campsites that uh, the young people would uh, enjoy to, to use. And we also have an um, international chain of hotels that are based in Kenya. And so, uh, you know, um, depending on what your pocket, um, you know, what, uh, how much you, you can afford, um, Kenya has um, quite a range of, 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 of products for you and, and, and comforts that uh, you, would, you could ask anywhere in the world. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I think that's so fascinating that there's such a diversity of, of places to explore in Kenya. I think the audience would be interested to know, you know, what are the many ways you're promoting the country and, you know, even beyond just safaris, there's so many more places to visit. So how is the government, you know, promoting Kenya to the world? Cynthia can give a try to that. She comes from the marketing board of uh, of, 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 of Kenya, and uh, I think she can she can give it a try. Jacinta. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Secretary. Um, uh, because of the diversity of the country, uh, we are able to reach out and uh, meet the, the needs of the various uh, segments uh, in the world. So what we are doing as a country is uh, to position Kenya as a, a preferred uh, destination in terms of diversity. Uh, we are reaching this consumer through various ways. Uh, definitely uh, directly uh, joint uh, consumer campaigns and also with the trade where we are inviting them uh, to work with us so that we can support them through their channels to be able to reach the consumers. Uh, we also focusing on media to continue uh, telling our story, to continue endorsing the destination and uh, doing um, activities and events that really profile the destination positively. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that is key for us is, um, is uh, hosting events, uh, international events, such as congresses, conferences, and the summits where 
um, VIPs and uh, influential persons are able to come and visit the country and for us that is a key endorsement. And uh, we continue to focus on consumers through various platforms, online, uh, electronic, and also face-to-face -face events such as uh, trade exhibitions and roadshows where we are training travel agents and tour operators about the diversity of the destination. So we are attacking the market uh, both uh, on the push and pull side of the demand side and the supply to be able to, uh, to get the consumer's demand uh, fully fulfilled um, in accordance to what the product uh, offering is in the market. Great, that's an excellent overview. Um, sounds like you're doing a lot both on and offline. Um, at Google, we're particularly interested in the online ways that you're promoting. Um, are you doing Are you doing a lot of social media? Do you find that um, visitors like to see videos? What are the main online sources um, of marketing that you're working on? Jacinta, you do you still want to come in on that? Uh, yes. Um, uh, thank you. Yes, we are. We are. We are focusing on social media. Uh, we have uh, digital platforms and. Um, with, uh, being able to share content on various platforms. We've uh, had campaigns uh, with Google Travel. We've uh, had campaigns with Triple Advisor. We are working with um, even um, uh, hotel booking sites to be able to present the product directly to the consumer. And uh, we all the government uh, agencies, including ourselves, are connected. Uh, right now, we have a campaign which we call uh, Why I Love Kenya. Uh, you know, trying to get everybody to find a reason uh, every day to post to the world and, and, and say why they love Kenya. Uh, we're also having a digital uh, native advertising uh, upcoming on CNN um, um, uh, online, and we'll carry this out for the next six months. So that is uh, one of the big ones for us that is uh, upcoming. do their own marketing and to with us today we have Jane who can tell us what she does in her business in terms of promoting Kenya as a business person from Kenya. Um, thank you. In the way we market in um, for our, the trade for the uh, two operators we do um, trade fairs that are held around the world like the one we are in now. We we do um, a lot of online um, marketing as well, and uh, we have agents around the world where we partner with them as we market our destination. Thank you. Are you are you able? Are you seeing a? Are you? Do you have a different strategy in marketing for the various demographics? So maybe. Is there a different strategy for people with families versus, you know, um, trying to reach millennials? Are you are you thinking about how you're trying to reach different demographics? Jane, try it again. Um, yes, what we're doing is that um, we we market to different um, segments in the industry. So um, we normally have family safaris where we even have generations coming together on safari. So we have different um, ways of reaching out to the young and the old, and the, the different um, types of safaris or types of tours. If we target the birders, if we target the youth, if we target um, incentives, we market them differently depending on which part of the, country, the world they want, they're in. That's how we target them, on online or direct marketing. I'm saying um, Jane is spot on because that's why we're here on Google today, uh, you know, Hangout, to target uh, the younger uh, travelers. Uh, because, like, like she says, each segment, um, you know, has its own uh, expectations, uh, not only about the product, but how we market. So we're very sensitive to that. Thank you. Thanks so much for that overview. It's very interesting. I, I would imagine that, you know, especially for the international travelers, people come with their own 
preconceived notions of, of Kenya and what they expect to see when they get there. Um, I think the audience would like to know like, what what are people most shocked when they when they get to Kenya? What are some of the things that you hear that are, are they most surprised about when they when they get in the country? I will turn the question around and talk about what they would be very happy about. Um, because it's it's easier for the traveler to perhaps um, you know uh, note the things that would shock them. Uh, for me, uh, you know, I'd be biased about my country, obviously, uh, but I think the most important uh, thing that uh, they'll be very happy about, um, and perhaps even uh, shocked at the same time because of culture shock, is is our people. Um, we are people that are very um, very warm. And you find that um, you know when we, a lot of the majority of the people speak English, and so and very urban. Um, you know, of course, we have a rural uh, community, uh, but we are so much used to visitors that it 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 will make your experience one that you'll never forget. And that's why for Kenya, we get a lot of repeat um, visitors into Kenya. In fact, we've been told it's at 20% as we speak, because it's it's all about the experience, and and we are actually known for uh, really um, our people are, who are working in the hospitality industry. We've managed to export a lot of Kenyans, and that's the wrong word to use, but a lot of Kenyans have gone out there to work in the hospitality industry in the Middle East or in other parts of Africa, just because we are very hospitable people, and and we easily mingle with people, and, 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 and that's something, I think, pleasantly that people will find um, uh, about Kenya. I think there is, uh, Anne can add uh, something um, uh, about uh, what people would discover uh, in, when they go to Kenya that they will never forget. Anne? That's in our country, we have all the hotels. Um, we have the ranges from one star to five star, even six star. We are the cradle of humankind. Everyone, everyone wants to come and see where they came from, the origin of mankind. And this one has been proven scientifically. We have all the products, diversity of products, since we have 47 counties. In all these 47 counties, we have different products. We have eco uh, launches. We have agro-tourism. We have distinct culture yet in the same country, and they offer variety, it is a place to be. Kenya is a place to visit, the preferred tourist, uh, tourist destination in the world. Thank you. One thing that um, I am very curious about, and I noticed when I was in um, Nairobi in January, was um, the amount that people are, are connected to the internet and um, use of mobile phones, everyone seems to have at least one, maybe two different devices, even a smartwatch. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how uh, technology is impacting the tourism industry in Kenya? Um, is it allowing more people to uh, be connected while they're traveling there, um, to plan part of their trip while they're there? Um, and what other ways are you seeing that um, there are a lot of innovations within the tourism industry? Uh, uh, thank you very much for that question. Um, Nairobi is known for, uh, you know, as a technology hub. Uh, indeed, it's called um, the Silicon Savannah. And um, we increasingly, we're getting a lot of inquiries from all over the world, especially um, from the US and India on, you know, how they could uh, use that or how they can uh, partner with, with, with Kenyan uh, especially the youth, um, you know, in terms of uh, creating or innovating new products. Uh, and so, we, we, just to mention quickly that uh, we are known for a financial product called M-Pesa, and, and, and that's very widely used in Kenya. You could use um, that um, uh, technology uh, through your phone. You could actually uh, pay for all other services, even in the very remote areas in, in Kenya. And so that's something that is very unique to Kenya, and we are actually exporting that to the rest of the world. So having said that, uh, in terms of 
tra travel industry. We are also, you know, a lot of innovations is going into developing new apps uh, in the in, in in the sector. But just um, to follow up on what uh, Jacinta earlier said, you know, we're looking at actually applying technology uh, in, in 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 that in that uh, sector partnership with. Uh, uh, Jovago.com, for example, in terms of, um, you know, as you know, this is the leading online uh, uh, booking website uh, that is partnering with our, our K K Kenya Tourism Board in terms of uh, increasing the bookings into Kenya is just one example. And so uh, technology is something that we really uh, utilize. In fact, Kenya is known for in terms of um, ownership of um, you know mobile phones, uh, Kenya is is I think one of the highest uh, in in Africa in terms of uh, use usage of uh, mobile phones. So it's widely used. Uh, perhaps Jacinta, Jacinta, you'd like to add something there? Did I? Uh, thank you uh, very much, Madam. Uh, I just want to re-emphasize that uh, you said it all. Actually, uh, the use of technology makes it uh, easier for us to present the product to the consumer directly uh, through various um, uh, platforms, uh, social, digital, and um, the, the planning for the trip uh, gets shorter and, and the, the consumer asks for what they are already aware of because they are able to search. All our websites have this information, we are all connected, and they are able to even zoom in and see and have a view of the rooms where they want to stay. So this makes, you know, when a consumer is, in, is, is informed, they are, they are easier to handle because um, you already know the expectations uh, that uh, they have. Uh, the other thing is that um, pricing has been affected by, 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 by uh, technology. Uh, we find that uh, there are fantastic offers now online and uh, guests are able to really go for value addition and being able to, to get um, offers that, that before they could not because using the, the, the conventional way of uh, doing a business. And then the ability for, for, our, for our visitors to share their experiences is, is, is a plus for us. We are having Wi-Fi everywhere, hotels give uh, free Wi-Fi, you get in there and you just want the world to know what you're experiencing and this is a positive endorsement. So wherever you go, we, we, we encourage the guests to just share something and say, you know, what, what you're going through, what are you experiencing. Uh, for us, this is, a, this is a positive thing and the ability for us also to get our guests to pay uh, using the mobile money. Well, you know, not everybody has a credit card, even in Kenya. So as so long as you have a, a, a cell phone, you're able to pay using the mobile uh, money transfer. So the con to consume tourism is easier now because anytime, wherever you're seated, you're in your home and you want to catch the flight, you pay directly um, on mobile money and off you, you, you go to the airport, you book your hotels, everything, and, and, and do a mobile money uh, transfer. So it's, it's easy for, for, for our guests to get around. So making it um, a better experience for the client. Thank you. Definitely sounds like uh, the impact of technology has been tremendously positive um, in the tourism industry. Many things that you've mentioned from um, the ability to share photos uh, while they're in their trip to being able to more easily access information before they make their trip to actually making payments while they're there. Um, what are some of the ways that you encourage travelers to Kenya um, to, to post about their trip while they're there. Uh, do you make mentions, um, include any specific campaigns around uh, getting people to post while they're, while they're in, uh, in Kenya itself? Uh, sorry, um, yes. Um, I think we'll be running quite a number of campaigns, uh, you know, to encourage uh, visitors uh, to upload, uh, you know, their, 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 their photos into into uh, the worldwide uh, uh, web and 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 get um, you know the rest of the world to share really the experiences in Kenya. So those run from time to time. Uh, we run those campaigns from time to time, uh, and I think we're just about to run uh, a global campaign on on Kenya, and and I think that's one of the areas that we'll be looking at in terms of um, you know encouraging uh, really um, the, 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 our visitors to 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 share their experiences in Kenya. Jacinta, do you want to add anything uh, you think on that? Uh, uh, thank you, Madam. Uh, you know, uh, in Kenya we have uh, the fiber optic um, and 
ability to have uh, 3G, 4G in most of the cities. You're down uh, uh, watching the migration and you're able to take clips and share them uh, online. So what, what, what uh, we are doing is to, as a government, of course, as the uh, cabinet sector I said, is to invest in ICT and infrastructure to make it um, easy for investors to, to, to engage with their consumers and uh, make it easy for the consumers to be able to share um, uh, with, their, with their audiences. So it's, it's a matter of making sure that the environment is, is good for the investor so that uh, uh, we, an environment is good for the consumer to be able to, to take advantage of the technology um, as they tour the country. Great, that's so interesting. Uh, maybe switching gears for a little bit. I know sometimes for the international traveler, someone who hasn't been um, to Kenya or even Africa, um, you know, there's this notion of, of being concerned about security. Is that something you guys think about when you're marketing Kenya? Is that how are you kind of, um, you, know, um, you know, educating the, the traveler to understand that, you know, Kenya is, is a safe place? Yes, thank you very much for asking. Uh, perhaps what I what I've been calling in in, in these two, uh, uh, you know, the elephant in the room that we must discuss the issue of security because the issue of security, um, you know, is is something that is not of concern not only in Kenya but all over the world. Uh, right now, the world is facing, um, you, you know, uh, major challenges in terms of terrorism, and 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 every country is trying to really. Uh, see how they can quickly respond and arrest the situation. And I think what is encouraging for me as minister is to say that, um, you know, increasingly the world is realizing that we have to share this information. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of it, if we share intelligence information, then uh, we will be able to, um, you know, um, tackle this problem um, as, as, as a world problem. And so for Kenya, we, we are really partnering with a, a lot of international partners to ensure that we, we, we do share that the intelligence information and that we share how the best practice as to how we can tackle this issue. Having said that, also in Kenya we have really invested a lot in uh, security agents to ensure that they are very well in, equipped to uh, manage and tackle this issue. Uh, we have um, are spending over 12% of our, our budget on, 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 on equipping uh, you, you know the army and the police, um, and 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 also uh, to say that uh, this issue is something that is uh, new to everyone uh, all over the world, and and a lot of it is, as I've just said, is information sharing. So we have, um, you know, the communities are helping in this in this uh, tackling this problem, uh, because most of these people come and live within the communities, and and unless the communities share the information and tell us who they think you know, would be somebody that would, um, you know, be or, uh, you know, harmful to the community and to and to our visitors in particular in this case, uh, then it's quite difficult for us to uh, to tackle the problem. And so we're tackling it from an international, uh, uh, you know, perspective also internally uh, amongst our own people and also to make sure that uh, the, 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 our police and, and security organs are very well equipped uh, to manage uh, the problem, uh, and so that, that we, we are, um, I can tell you that um, you know uh, it's been a challenging two years, but we have managed to surmount the problem. And I'd like to assure everyone who's listening to me that Kenya is safe. I was just telling uh, the audience that I just addressed about an hour ago that uh, next week we have the you know uh, a global entrepreneurship uh, summit in Nairobi of which we're expecting uh, President Obama to visit, and he wouldn't come if he thought that Kenya is unsafe. Towards the end of the year, we have the Pope coming to Kenya, and he wouldn't come if he thought Kenya was unsafe. And we have uh, major international conferences like WTO that is there in December. And so we have um, you know, received a lot of endorsement from our international community that Kenya is safe. And I can just tell you that yes, 99% uh, of Kenya is, is, um, is safe. Where we have the problem is right at the border of Somalia, um, and we are tackling that issue uh, uh, as we speak. Thank you, Madam Secretary. 
I'm very impressed by all the, the work that you've all put in to ensure that it, it maintains um, its great reputation abroad as being a very safe um, and exciting place to visit. And on that note, um, I think we have time for about one more question. And uh, I'm curious if you all could tell us, um, since you've all either spent time living there or lived there now, um, what's one place that's a unique place to visit that uh, travelers wouldn't necessarily know about um, from uh, the main, outside of the main cities and main uh, safari destinations? Okay, I will start with Anne. Perhaps Anne will tell us um, uh, something about a place that uh, is unique, that she thinks it's unique and it's outside the city. Anne. Thank you, Madam Sines. Um, I would ask our visitors to visit Lam. That is where we have our heritage. It is a beautiful, beautiful place. A place where um, the everything uh, it's not spoiled. It's it's you go there and really you just want to stay there. It's really a beautiful place. The other place is the uh, Kakamega Forest, where we have the eco lounge, um, and there is the eco tourism. You listen to all types of birds singing, and it's a beautiful place. It's out of Nairobi. We have uh, a place called Meru. Meru National Park is a place which is which has all the animals and some of them which are not found in other national parks. Those those are very good places to visit. And as we emphasize, we need to visit Lake Turkana, the cradle of humankind. That one everyone needs to come and visit. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Uh, Jacinta, one place please. The one one place I think Anne has has really covered a lot. <laughs> so I think uh, other than what she has said, uh, my one very unique place that uh, I would invite the world to visit, maybe uh, not ex that they haven't expected, is a uh, Shimba Hills National Park. And why Shimba Hills? It's the only park by the coast line of Kenya. Thirty minutes from the beach, and you're in a totally different place, a national park with animals, elephants, you know, lions, uh, giraffes, zebras, and an endemic species of um, antelope called the sable antelope. You can't find that anywhere else in the world. So that is uh, my little secret about Kenya. Jane, Jane, give it a shot. Yes. Um. The other place that, although it's in the city, Nairobi is the only um, city in Africa or in the world with a national park. So that is something that is unique for Kenya. And another national park that we can talk about is Amboseli, the home of the elephants. That is another unique um, aspect because you'll see loads of elephants in Amboseli. Thank you. So you see, for me, it's um, as Minister of Tourism, it's, it's going to be very tricky for me to say um, <laughs> which 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 place I'd prefer in Kenya. But uh, generally, really, Kenya is unique as 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 a, as a destination. Uh, we still have the authentic uh, safari, although people are saying, uh, you know, is it the same safari? Kenya has an authentic safari where the animals roam in the world, and so you know we have a lot of diversity, both from you know the safari from to culture to new products that we are introducing into the market, um, like like culture for example, and also adventure tourism. We have uh, you know scuba diving in in Kenya, you know paragliding. In fact, we are known to have the best record in terms of paragliding. Uh, you can swim with 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 the um, with the dolphins in South Coast, and and so I could talk the whole day. Kenya is one country where you don't, you cannot, uh, you know, just read about it. You need to go and experience. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. I think I speak for for all our viewers, and that we're going to be dreaming about uh, Kenya tonight, and all the national parks, the coastlines, the wildlife safari. Um, thank you so much, all of you, for sharing your, your stories and um, your experiences from Kenya. I 
we would all like to go visit very, very soon. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, Madam Secretary again uh, for, for your time today. Um, thank you, Dr. Kinua. Thank you, Ms. Nizoka. And thank you, Ms. Adam. You've all shared such great experiences with us. Um, and again, we're all very excited. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a trip planned to, to Kenya soon. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, and stay tuned for future Hangouts on Air.